Hey, happy Monday. Wasn't sure if this was gonna work with my magical gloves. Yes, it's, we're in New York here. It's freezing cold. Proof, I'm wearing my scarf and, but my little puppy and I need some fresh air. And as I'm walking, I was just, once again, thinking over the conversations I've had with so many people this morning, yesterday, the day before, and people who are reaching out to me, uh, needing or wanting help with anxiety, PTSD, trauma, overcoming these awful experiences from their past. And some of the stories, the stories are bad enough. And some of those things that people experience, quite honestly, they should have never experienced it, right? And yet it did happen. So um, obviously any experience we have in our life will leave an imprint will leave some kind of a mark on us, especially if there was a lot of emotion, either positive or negative, tied to that event. And now it's bad enough that this happened, right? And obviously we can't reverse the clock and we also can't change the past. And obviously it did happen, right? But now what do we do with it? Well, what if I told you, here's the good news. What if I told you that anybody who wants to can absolutely, definitely overcome uh, PTSD, be free from it, be free from the nightmares, be free from the incessant thinking and worrying and being stuck in the past and shame and guilt and, and uh, what the other one? so much anger, rage, things like that. Um, because again, when people spend their whole day with anxiety, with depression, feeling bad, you know, revenge is another one. Just not not letting not letting go, you know. Um, honestly, what that does to our nervous system, it that is toxicity. That by our thoughts and the feelings that those thoughts produce, create this toxicity, which ultimately leads to illness, exaggerated aging, and um, and just, quite frankly, miserable life. And uh, I was just thinking about, yeah, so here is a story that I was working, what was it Saturday with somebody, this woman is in her late 50s, and suddenly, although not so suddenly, her husband, her soulmate, passed away in, uh, you know, uh, two years ago, shortly after he passed away, she developed this tremor in her hand. And she had sought all kinds of medical advice. She's been to all kinds of doctors until, and here's the thing, she reached out to me about two months ago and she said, could hypnosis work with this? You know, what, what could I do with her? What could she do? And would this work? And what kind of results could she expect? Which are amazing questions, by the way. And however, she said, but you know what? I do have another doctor's appointment. I just want to circle back and, and just get checked out one more time by this other doctor, highly renowned, blah, blah, blah. And so she came back. I checked in with her. I said, hey, you know, what's going on? Do, have you gotten a diagnosis yet? What's the plan? And she wrote me this long email, ultimately saying that she was diagnosed with Parkinson's and she was in such a state of shock. She just walked home went home crying, hysterical. She couldn't believe that. And she was so skeptical about the diagnosis because she said, then I researched that in order for us to even realize that I have Parkinson's, and please forgive, medical terms are not my strength, but I think she said something like, you need, you actually need to have an MRI or some, some kind of a test. And she said the doctor just literally spoke to her for like 20 minutes and, this, and then simply said, well, you have Parkinson's and here's a pill obviously in a nutshell, right? And this woman was devastated, devastated. She says, you know, I, first of all, I don't believe I have Parkinson's. I have a tremor in my hand. Th those are the only symptoms I have. And I don't want to keep you here for too long. But here is, she finally agreed. She said, I decided not to take the medicine. I simply don't believe that I have Parkinson's. Yes, I have a tremor. That's obvious. That's undeniable. But I don't know if I will totally believe this diagnosis. I'm going to go see another doctor. In the meantime, I would love to, um, you know, do some hypnosis with you. And again, understand what I can get out of it. 
Well, lo and behold, and this is what happens in every session, especially when we're dealing with whether it be anxiety, depression, insomnia, incessant thoughts, incessant worry. I'm sorry, I'm just, I have to stay attentive to my dog because I want to make sure he doesn't escape me. Should he be interested in another dog, right? Of course, why wouldn't he? <laughs> um, where was I? Um, yeah. So whether it's insomnia, um, what are some of the other things? Oh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, negative habits, self-sabotage, whatever, that negative issue, that symptom as it shows up in, in our life. When I work with somebody who is experiencing that, obviously negative, right? Because who wants to have anxiety? What we always discover is the root cause. And this woman discovered that she had so much guilt about herself. And I'm getting goosebumps as I'm saying that she suddenly realized that she has forgiven her parents and her, her husband and all these people in her life, but she never forgave herself. And she cried for like five minutes straight and literally gave me like some of the downloads and um, I, I just, I felt for her and she said after, you know, she felt such a release. She felt so much lighter. She felt so much better. She said, oh my God, I didn't realize how much of that baggage I was carrying around with me and why. And, you know, she had a completely different understanding. So, and, oh my God, and so a couple of hours later i receive an email from her and she said oh so tired after the session and i took a nap and i cuddled with my cats and all that and she said and my tremor feels like it has been dialed down as if there were a knob attached to it and now that tremor literally is so much less i think she described like it went from 80 percent to 20 percent and now i just also want to clarify this is a process doesn't mean she was healed in one session, although I'm not saying that's impossible. It could be possible, but you know, I was clear with her that this is a process and you know, her mind and her body have the ability to heal herself and I simply gave her the tools. The work is still up to her and she committed and agreed to doing it. Now, what I would like to share with you as far as the worst thing to do when somebody has or is suffering from PTSD and trauma from the past and it pains my heart to have so many conversations where people tell me that this is how they are guided that this is how they are led and please understand I am not bashing anybody I am not judging anybody I am not um, I'm not saying what's good or bad I am simply talking from experience and what I know for sure is not useful, does not lead to healing, and is not healthy for somebody. So many of the people I've worked with, who by the way, successfully overcame anxiety and depression, have been told in therapy to talk about that bad experience and or experiences and continue talking about it because supposedly that will allow them to be free from it and to let go of the anxiety. And here is the problem with this. First of all, in a nutshell, that is absolutely the wrong approach to help somebody overcome any kind of trauma PTSD. Because if we continue looking at the problem and looking at all the ways this is a problem, how exactly is that supposed to lead to, to a solution? And we're talking about a human being. What's really happening as we invite people to talk about this awful, horrific event, you know, these people get reassociated into this event, meaning they are re-experiencing, re-feeling, and reliving these experiences, which is the worst form of treatment. It is, in fact, outdated, outmoded. It is, it's a heartless way to treat people. And, and I'm here to tell you, and maybe Facebook will take me to, I don't even know, but I'm here to tell you that if that is what you experience, my invitation to you, should you want to hear it and take it, 
if that should ever happen, walk out. That's, that's what I would do if I were in your shoes because that is a completely inefficient, uh, um, antiquated way to help, in quotation mark, people. It is one of the worst things that a person, because here's the thing, they have already lived this. This is already in the past. Now, what the hypnosis that I do with my clients actually does, which is useful, what if, and by the way, we always get to this place, what if in that suck, in that trauma, in that horrific thing, what if in there you will find powerful resources that are there for you? What if you could find priceless lessons that are there for you that you get to take into the future? Because once you understand it, you will be able to utilize these tools that have been a part of you all along, but nobody was able to show you how to tap into that. So these resources, these lessons, and what if there were gifts in there for you? Because I know this sounds a little weird and this sounds a little twisted, but there is a reason this happened for you. And together we can discover what that reason is so that going forward, and this is the only thing we can change or have the potential to change, is your future. What if you could take those resources, those gifts, those lessons, all those things that were yours to begin with into the future so that you can become the best version of yourself, be as confident as you want to be. God forbid, maybe you want to be bold. Maybe you want to be loud. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Maybe you finally want to go after what you always have been going after, or maybe you just want to sleep good at night. Maybe you want to be a role model to your kids instead of a warning sign and feel broken and feel the and feel like, oh my God, there's no, I don't know what you want, but what if you could? Because if you can imagine it, you can become it. And please don't give me the, I am too old, you know, this is the worst, you know, this can't, this is too, too bad of an experience. I don't buy into that. It's, it's not true. Anybody can achieve this. Anybody can get to this place. And my job as a hypnotist is to simply guide you. Trust me, you'll be doing all the work. <laughs> so, you know, you will be doing all the work. And yet the work is actually, um, pain-free, easy, easy to do, efficient, and I, yeah, I mean, I can't even, it's, it's, it's a very kind approach instead of having to think about these memories over and over and over again, which is the worst thing somebody should have to experience, in my opinion. And again, the only reason I'm saying this is because I hear so many stories of the way people are being treated and just my heart breaks for these people. And here's the other truth. Look, these well-meaning people obviously are trying to help and they're doing the best they can with what they have. And that's okay. Everybody's doing the best they can with what they have. And I'm here to share with you that these tools are I call them magical just because um, it, it had allowed me to understand how the mind works, what memories really do to us, how we can use our emotions to control uh, our life and, and the outcome of our life and the results that we're experiencing. And my passion is to teach everybody that is interested in learning how to do this and what could be better than knowing how to control your own mind and how to be in charge of your life, right? Because of course problems are gonna happen, challenges are gonna, that's for sure that's gonna happen. But what if you could have a new way to deal with these challenges, difficult people, problems, you know, and truly turn them into opportunities and have amazing days ahead? And so that's what I'm passionate about and, um, Thank you for listening. And if you know anybody who needs my help, wants my help, 
private message me or share this video um, because I, I really want to um, show you that I am here for you and um, no problem, no problem could possibly be too big or too overwhelming or too challenging. There is no such thing. I, I don't believe it. So be well on this Monday and hopefully where you are it's a little bit warmer. This New York weather is really not my favorite but I'm grateful for my scarf, my gloves, <laughs> magic gloves, and I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. Take care. See if my magic gloves work to, to